Boom! What's going on, everyone? This is Steve Lars. Welcome to Sales Phone Radio. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, my mindset. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, so I just got off this yacht trip, and it was a ton of fun. We got to this little island to uh, Bimini, and it was beautiful. I've never seen water so clear. Um, or still, and we were in the ocean, there's no waves, it's like glass, it's crazy. Um, anyways, really interesting because we had a chance to just talk and teach and sit down with one another. And one of the things that I wanted to uh, share with you guys today is something that I learned in that little mastermind on an island I've never heard of before. <laughs> and uh, it was really, really cool. Um, it was actually from Annie Grace. And if you don't know who Annie Grace is, she has an entire business teaching people how to break the habits of uh, basically being an alcoholic. And uh, what's fascinating is the level of depth she's had to study how the brain works in order to truly be effective in this. And she has a massive, massive following, you guys. Annie Grace is truly impressive. Uh, impressive and... Um, Anyway, she's, she's, a, she's awesome. What I wanted to do real quick, though, is walk through some of the things that she talks about and taught while we were there. Um, we, we got there, and uh, the captain didn't really know how to get us out like through customs, so we sat on the ship, uh, this, this 100-foot yacht, for like, I don't know, a couple hours. And then we had, um, uh, we had dinner, which was great there, and stuff like that. Anyway, we started this little mastermind at like 11 p.m. and went till 1.30 in the morning, something like that. And then we had to get back on the ship at uh, 5.45 in the morning and uh, head back out. But so anyways, most of us were super tired when this was going down. I had to pop up my, my computer and take a whole lot of notes on Trello. I knew otherwise I would have a hard time focusing. So anyways, this is what I wrote. And so I have my phone here and I'm actually just going to walk through uh, some of uh, the notes that I was learning from Annie Grace and she stood up and she was teaching us about more about how the brain works and I thought it was very fascinating and there's a lot of ties with how I've tried to behave okay I'm going the reason I'm, I'm going to go over this and then I want to tell you why I'm going over it okay this is a repeated theme that I'm starting to see here anyway what she did is she started to t- uh, teach us how thoughts are things literally okay so I'm going to read a few of these notes here okay thoughts are things the ability to think Okay, that is, um, that's what she was teaching us. She's teaching us the source of thought and thoughts are actually things. It's very interesting. Thoughts are literally electricity with protein. Okay, the thought itself is like a blast of electricity in the brain, right? Really, really fast. And uh, they're literally light, okay? Thought is light, uh, which is fascinating in and of itself, by the way. Okay, thought is light. Proteins build structure around your brain and guide the light. Okay, so when we are having thoughts and when we're experiencing a new aha or whatever, there's a little lightning bolt shooting around in our head. And the more we experience that same thought, the reason we keep having the same thought is because proteins build around in our brain and channel the light. Okay, it's very fascinating. Um, 80% of what we thought about yesterday will be what we thought about, what we think about today. That's very interesting. So I'm just going to run through a few of these things here and so you guys to teach a little bit about how thought works, okay? This is all from Annie Grace. Um, let's see. Repeated thoughts build protein on protein on protein and is literally what establishes habit, okay? So if you have a habit or a force of thought, right? If you're, if you're thinking over and over and over again the same way, the reason, okay, is because you have a bulking of proteins that have built on top of each other over time and guide the light in your head, meaning your thoughts. Okay, actually guide your thoughts inside of your head. Um, uh, Which is, is, right, there's there's like pros and cons to this, right? If you have grown up and the culture of maybe your family or the culture of the way maybe you're raised or those you're hanging around continually spur the same negative thought or continually tell you, right, no, you're never gonna do this, right? It's the reason why you really are the average of the top five people you hang around. I mean, that's the reason that's true. True. If I want a different thoughts, I need different environment. Okay, I'm gonna build protein on protein on protein in my head that channel the thought. The more protein I have built up, make the thought easier to have and keep. 
Ooh, interesting. Okay, this is really fascinating. Um, habits are literally lots of proteins uh, to make it easy for the light to travel. Okay, so if I want different habits, different habits of thought, different ha- right? I lit- all I'm doing is I'm building up different parts of my brain, literally physically building up different parts of my brain for the light to easily uh, travel inside of. Okay. My brain, it's funny, she said this during the thing. She goes, for example, she said, just so you guys know, so if you keep having the same thoughts or you have a skill set, the amount of time the light has spent, right, the thoughts have spent spinning around in your head, the more proteins have built on top of each other, physically have a larger part of the brain for those thoughts. And she goes, for example, Stephen Larson's brain on offer creation is huge. <laughs> it is massive. Okay? He has a huge bulging area where offer creation exists in his brain. And I was like, oh, anyway, I thought it was funny. Um, Anyway, uh, what part of your brain is biggest is your biggest habits. I thought that was cool. So um, whatever you think about most will grow. And that was one of the major things she was teaching about. And that's an actual, that will physically change your brain. Okay, your brain is like a stamp of what you're actually thinking about. Very fascinating. Whatever you think about most will grow. Um, she said being happy. She, it, her argument was being happy, being unhappy, different things in our life is a result of pattern thinking, okay? Uh, what's funny is, or what's interesting is you can completely rewire the brain starting in four days and be completely rewired in as, uh, as fast as 21 days, okay? And so then she started talking about different ways to break and rebuild, okay, the, uh, the thoughts inside of our head, right? By gaining awareness over the fact that we have a thought we don't, we don't want, Okay, uh, getting clarity on why that thought may be wrong and then flipping it, okay, turning around. She calls it the act, okay, awareness, clarity, turn around. And uh, anyway, so I thought it was very, very fascinating. The reason I'm going over this, guys, is because one of the things that I'm continually getting uh, commented about now when I'm walking around in public and such and, and um, or around people at least know what I do. Whenever, anytime when somebody asks me what I do, I just say, oh, I sell stuff on the internet <laughs> because I don't want to explain it sometimes, okay? <laughs> Maybe, uh, anyway, I should probably come up with another way to say that, but anyway. When I'm hanging around those who, who know what I do and geek out with me, a recurring theme I'm beginning to a- be asked is, Stephen, you seem to move with such um, ease. Like, you, you, uh, you set a goal, you see where you want to go, and then you just kind of go, you just do it. You just go for it. And I was, this has been commented on multiple times, especially in the last little bit here. And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's my answer to it. Why, why, if I know what I want, like, why would I sit back and like not move towards it? But it's becoming a, a recurring theme here. So I, I want to just peel back the curtain here just a little bit and just help you understand um, why that is. Okay. Now you guys understand I've been doing this game now for almost eight years. Okay. Eight years. Um, I didn't start publishing until about, I don't know, it was about three years ago. Almost four-ish. No, it was about four years ago because I was still in college when I really started. I mean, I sucked at it super bad, but like, anyway. So it's about half the time, right? I've been publishing and I was absolutely, like, seriously terrible at it. Uh, on the podcast, actually, Sales Funnel Radio and the YouTube channel, you can go back and watch some of the early videos. I didn't delete them. I want to. They're bad, really bad. And uh, I would try and do them live on Periscope and I would wait for these people to show up, but I felt like I had to fill the time. And so I would just, I would just keep talking and I don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. They're seriously terrible. Okay. What I'm trying to help you guys understand is like all, everything that you see and everything that I've done has been a result of will. Okay. It has not been an accident. I am 100% the least likely success story for all of this. Didn't know how to talk. Didn't know how to think. Kicked out of school. I had, I'm pretty sure, a massive addiction to video games in, in high school. Um, in fact, I think, I'm pretty sure I did. Um, I didn't want to speak to any adults. I uh, did not study. I was very much overweight. I was 35% body fat. I wasn't, I'm not just pulling that number out. That was the actual tests I was taking. Okay, the little pinching tests and stuff. 35% body fat. Okay, I was fat. I was lazy. I had no discipline. Okay, you understand? Like, I am the exact opposite person that I am today that, that I was then. And uh, it didn't start without a lot of just freaking grit. I mean, <laughs> there's no other way around it sometimes. There's little hacks and there's little tiny, I don't, I don't want to say tricks, but there's ways to speed up the process. There's very few real shortcuts. Publishing consistently is a shortcut for making up in funnel building skills or the lack thereof. But like, there's not many other real shortcuts to development. 
um, while we were driving back, it's actually the same yacht trip, okay? We, we came back into the port of Miami, got off, got in the car, and I was sitting with uh, Brent Copeters and Natalie Hodson, and we were in the same Uber, and we were driving out there. And Natalie and I were talking about, it was really nice of her. She was saying, she's saying, it's crazy how much you've just blown up in the last, like, year and a half. I said, oh, thanks, appreciate that, you know? And, and she goes, uh, um, I can't remember exactly what she asked. But I told her what I realized is that my business does not grow beyond my personal level, right? So it's been like this dance, right? Well, you guys know I've, I've danced between marketing and systems, marketing and systems, right? All of these spurts of just tons of, you know, a lot of cash coming in, and the, but it'll outdo my systems. And I'm like, crap, I got to pull back and then go build the systems. But the same has been true for like business overall and then my own personality and capacity. There is not a chance... I could actually be performing the way I am even four years ago. I didn't qualify. You know what I mean? And so one of the things I've, I've really been careful to do in this last little bit is be conscious of how I'm thinking. And I just want to give you guys a few little tips or pieces of advice, I guess, if that's okay, uh, on things that I've done that have made a lot of difference in how I think. Because if brains literally are getting fatter in, in what we think about most, that's something to be conscious about, right? That's something, there's great news to that. There's, there's good and bad, actually, right? <laughs> the bad news might be you might have some really fat parts of your brain that you've got to break that have been, come from your family, that may have come from like bad, bad advice that, you know, maybe someone was poor that gave you, you shouldn't have listened to, maybe you did. Like we've all done that stuff, right? Becoming cognizant of things and beliefs inside. That's why what I do, like marketing itself is the act of changing beliefs with the intent of a sale. I'm literally rewiring their brain with what I do and I've gotten good at it, okay? But the same is true for our own brains and as we move forward on stuff, right? The negative could be that we have learned things in our lives that are not actually true, but we believe they are because we got a crap ton of proteins built up to make it easy for that thought to just stay there. Just stay there and stay there and spin that story inside your head and keep it there, right? Over and over and over again. The positive of all this, right? Annie was teaching, right? You can have a complete rewiring in 21 days, okay? That's insane. What was it? The body regenerates every cell every three months or something like that. Like you physically can become an entirely new human being every three months. You are anyway, okay? But if you're like ready, like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of this of my life or being broke or, or having scarcity mentality or being like freakishly negative all the time. Like that is draining to me. I hate being around people like that. Okay. And if, if you're tired of being, if you're tired of that, whatever it is, whatever it is, you can change it. Like that's the point of this episode. Okay. And all these people will keep walking up saying like, Stephen, how do you move so freely? It's practiced. There's the answer. Right? There's plenty of times I wake up and I'm like, I don't freaking want to do what I'm supposed to today. That happens a lot, guys. A lot, a lot. All right? But I get up. I use my environment as a place to get me in state. Okay? There's, there's no person out there who wants to be doing what they are 24-7. Right? One of my favorite guys I've been listening to a lot is David Goggins. And if you uh, are offended by swearing or words, don't listen to him. Okay? Uh, he swears a ton, but uh, his mentality, though, I'm a huge fan of. He runs like crazy. He does all these ultra marathons, and I was listening to an interview from him, and he was saying, he was sitting in front of uh, this guy, and, and someone was saying to him, why do you run if you hate it so much? And he's like, what are you talking about? It has nothing to do with that. I run because I'm preparing for life. I'm not running the run. I'm running because it's hard, and I hate it. I'm running because I'm developing a callous mind, and, like, I... I believe every single thing he's saying about that. That's exactly exact. That's how I've done it. Like there's no other way I can like just, that's the reason why guys, like when I started doing the two comma club X program and the original two comma club program, one funnel away, all my other programs, my personal, like I thought I would be teaching marketing principles. You guys, it more often than not well above the majority of the time, I don't even get to get to marketing principles and strategies and cool tactics. The person can't handle them. Okay, and I can't, most of the time, I can't even get inside someone's business and do what I, I know will work because I'm fighting their brains. I gotta break those proteins down. I gotta do it faster than four or 21 days. They, they bought my day, you know what I'm saying? So I've gotten really good at breaking and rebuilding people's beliefs quickly, okay? Or at least satiate it enough to try and install a new belief in their brain. And I've gotten fast at it. So what, again, 
I'm trying to give you guys a few little tips and tricks on, on how I've done this stuff, okay? Tricks is a, is, is a stupid phrase. I should not say tricks. There's no tricks, okay? There's the path and your speed on it. That's it. There's not really any shortcuts. So you got a few options. You can increase your speed or like don't do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? So one of the first things I like to do is understand that, number one, if you're having a hard time believing that any of this works or you could do it or you can make any money with it or whatever, understand that you don't have to be your own source of light for a while, right? If you're like, I, I have a hard time even thinking like that, don't try and make it conjure from your own head then. Borrow it. So some of the ways I've borrowed light from other people, some of the ways I borrowed motivation from other people is uh, you know, when, when, when time sucks, Right when when something's really hard, or I lost, or I, or maybe I'll lose in something, or something's more intense, or taking longer than I wanted to, or whatever. I listen to a ton of motivational videos. I listen to a ton of comedy, usually in the evenings. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to uh, isolate my brain and borrow light and ideas and thoughts and positivity. And I, you know, I really could do this because that person has and that person has and that person has. And if I haven't, it means I'm the variable, not the idea. You understand? And so one of the things I would encourage you guys to do is that I have a playlist on YouTube. I think it's public. You can, anyone can listen to it. It's called Mind Muscle, <laughs> okay? I'm building it. It's funny, I, when Andy Grace started talking about this, I was like, that's how I think about it, but it's so true. Mind muscle, I'm literally trying to build up areas of my brain to have um, consistent thoughts about whatever, positive thoughts, right? New ideas, new things. And that's how I can look at a funnel. I can look at something or look at a business and be and just have tons of ideas on how we could solve that. Because I have a lot of logged hours, you guys, right? Way more than 21 days where I'm just, just constant, repeated thought trying to build up now I know basically those proteins in my head. So anyways, number one, what I'm trying to help you guys understand is like if you, if you have a hard time being positive, not that you have to be this freaking, you know, cherry fairy all the time, you know what I mean? I'm positive all the time, like I'm not. Um, but if you have a hard time even believing the fact that what I do is real, if you have a hard time believing that you could also pull it off yourself or that you have the ability and the resources and the capacity around you to make it happen, Stop acting like you're the only source of the light and the, the ideas in your head to start installing those new beliefs. You're not, okay? I, I find just, I would encourage you to go find a ton of playlists uh, or a ton of uh, videos or whatever on YouTube, motivational stuff, whatever you find that is really inspiring to you where, where at the end you're like, man, I'm gonna take over the world, baby, what's up? Yeah, save that and then listen to it a lot. Multiple times, multiple times I have laid on this very floor with my head, or with my head, uh, sorry, my phone above my head on the floor. Crap, freaking battery died, sorry about that. But multiple times what I've done is I've laid on this very floor thinking about and listening to motivational stuff when I can't conjure it on my own. Every single influencer, every single leader has a support system, okay? And they will go and they'll lean back on it when they're not feeling strong enough. Um, and I really, anyway, just understand that, okay? I think there's this mentality sometimes like, Steven's got it all together, Russell's got it all together, all these people who are just big, they've got it all together. That is so freaking, that, that is terrible crap. That is a huge lie. I'm begging you not to believe it. What we've all gotten good at is literally, I, there is a, I know how to get myself in state. I'll tell you this morning, I'm tired, man. Like, I'm, I'm tired. And uh, there's a huge to-do list on my desk. It's massive. And that in the past, that would stress me out and I would seek basically dopamine releases and distractions in other ways. And I would watch excessive TV or play video games or I would, right? And I would seek the feel goods, right? Dopamine, the chemical distraction. I would try and get myself distracted and feel good from my massive to-do list, okay? This is something I fought and I had to get over that. There's a huge to-do list on my desk. I mean, it's absolutely massive. I gotta finish my funnel hacking live slides. Actually, I haven't even started them. Um, and I'm supposed to fin have them done in four days from now, which is like, oh, right? I'm, I'm launch I have an internal funnel team. I need to go and I need to set up a whole bunch of stuff for them so that they can do what I hired them to do, right? There's a, there's a lot of stuff on my plate right now, guys. Um, I need to edit a chapter for my book. Um, I need to, anyway, there's a lot, it's big, big projects. And when I, and when I have a lot of creativity, um, based things on my head, like that's a, that's a heavy weight. What I've gotten good at though, is taking those things, breaking them down, um, belittling the weight. I will belittle it. I'm like, that's ah, not that big of a deal. 
right? Is it huge? It really is, right? It's freaking huge. It's a big deal. I'm about to go speak over. I think they literally sold out in Funnel Hacking Live. I've been trying to figure out, like, is this, are they, are they just saying that or do they really? I think they actually sold out of Funnel Hacking Live. 4,500 people, right? I'm not gonna go screw that up. I have a lot of pressure on my noggin right now, but the way I handle it is practiced, my friends. I could not have handled this amount of pressure even two years ago, even a year ago. It is practiced. It is practiced. There is those protein buildups in my head for how to act as a CEO and entrepreneur and stage speaker and podcaster consistently, right? Which just takes a lot of work, right? Anyway, what I'm, I'm just trying to help you guys understand, like there is not a freaking soul on this planet that wakes up one day and says, I got it all together. Steven, how do you have all these pieces together? I don't, <laughs> okay? I just have more of it together than you do. Okay, if you're asking me that. Okay, I don't. And so what I do, it, build a, a support system. Find your inspiration on the outside. Know what inspires you, things that are outside of you. So then when you're not feeling it, you can plug into that, get your little solar charge, right? <laughs> and move on. And so uh, there's a few things that I do to do that, right? Number one, motivational videos, like I was just talking to you about. Um, I listen to those consistently, a lot with a lot of comedy. I actually listen to a lot of comedy. Um, even if I've heard it in the past, what I'm trying to do is just keep things light. Okay, I'm keeping things light. Um, I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln that said, um, with all the pressures in my life, if I did not laugh, I would surely die. That's huge, right? It's one of the reasons, I listen to a lot of comedy, okay? I don't think I've told you guys that. I listen to a lot of comedy because if I did not laugh, I would surely die. I'm trying to change the world. I'm trying to take something that I know that I have that's very unique that no one else has ever done and go and like change lives with it. It's working, but man, Right, you don't get it without really wanting it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you do not, you're not gonna be successful in this without really, really wanting it. And uh, and I do, and so I'm gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to help you guys understand is like get a support system, understand what motivates you. Um, be very careful of the advice you listen to and who you hang around. Very careful. Make sure that you you are in charge of your energy levels. If you even if you're not totally feeling it, guys, something that I learned from the army Fake motivation is still real motivation. And so when I step out and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm ready to rock the day. I'm not lying to myself, right? I'll tell, I'll have a little Betty White moment, right? I'll have a little Debbie Downer moment where I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna experience my true emotions as it is. I don't wanna do what I'm doing right now. I'll have a little pity party for a second, you're right, two, three minutes. And then I, I got my things that I walked through that helped me get back in state. Listen to comedy, listen to motivational videos, look at my goals, watch where I'm trying to go and simplify. I will actively oversimplify the weight of the tasks at hand. Um, not to lie to myself, right? But just make it manageable. And then I'll just focus on one little piece at a time. Put music on, drown everything out and just move, okay? And it's a practiced thing that I've developed over the past you know, eight years. And I wasn't cognizant of it until like really like four years ago, okay? I really wish I had someone to guide me back in the day. I just didn't. Um, anyway, does that make sense? And I hope that you guys understand what I'm talking about here with this. Um, you can literally change the makeup of your brain. And uh, it doesn't start, though, without your, your recognition of what you don't like about how you think. And if you're like, man, Stephen, the biggest one I hear from a lot of people is, Stephen, I, I have shiny object syndrome. Okay, believing that you have it literally is self-manifesting the fact that you have it, okay? I don't have shiny object syndrome, but I do suffer from insatiable curiosity. And I know that about myself, and I'm not gonna try and change that about myself. So I will go in the playground zone, and then I get hyper-focused, and I say no to pretty much everything that's out there. That is practiced, okay? I used to say yes to everything. I equated the number of opportunities on my desk with success. So I was like, oh, let's say yes to that. And yeah, that, 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 that. And I got nothing done. Okay, that was a very painful period for me because I knew I had the power to make money, but I still wasn't because I couldn't focus, okay? I'm just trying to help you guys understand, like, there's no guru out there. There's no influencer, no one who was born the way they are, who has it all together, who, right, didn't have to build these habits in the brain. And if you're willing to shift it up and change it and, and, and break yourself a little bit, right, go through some pain, oh no, by thinking different, you, you actually literally in a very short amount of time can be a new you. You're going to be anyways every three months. Every cell changes, right? Anyway, I know it's a different kind of episode, but it has everything to do with, with the, the stuff I teach. Okay, sales funnel radio often requires sales. A new life requires a new you. Okay, a new life requires a new you. 
And if you're like, I want to go have that, I've never had it before, prepare to change, my friend, okay? And get real about it and, and, and be, be open with the fact that you're, number one, be honest about it. I'm freaked out, cool, name it. There's nothing wrong with that. You should be honest with yourself. Don't act like your pain is not there, okay? But then come up with an attack plan. Don't stay and wallow in the pain, okay? Figure out a way and understand that a lot of us, we just know how to go recharge and replug. And, and that's it. That's literally the one, that's the secret. There it is, okay? What I'm trying to do is, and I try to understand that what I get done today, this is how one of the ways to oversimplify things, okay? What I get done today will determine where I am tomorrow, okay? And so if I'm like, man, I really need to get one, two, and three done today. If I don't, I, I, it's literally like I got nothing done today. Even if I got this little thing here, that thing there, but if I'm building a project or I've got something that I'm, what I get done today will determine where I am tomorrow. So I better freaking build and do the things that really cause a real foundation and not just fluffy, active, you know, dumb work. <laughs> you know what I mean? The dumb stuff. I only work on those things that I can build upon and just progress day by day. Anyways, hopefully that helps though, okay? So just understand the whole light in the brain thing. It is a true thing. It's a real thing. If you want a new you, you have complete power over that. No one else will do it or can except for you. And don't expect to be able to do it on your own. None of us have, none of us will, no one will in the future. So uh, start looking outward. Don't, don't be, there's no, I've never seen anyone ever show up with a two comic club award who did it on their own. I've ne ever, I've never seen anybody do it on their own, ever. Okay, there's over 500 two comic club awards now. Okay, 500 people, I've had a million dollars. Like, what else, What other proof do you freaking need, right? <laughs> Most of them, this is the first time I've ever done like really anything successful. It's not like they all came from these successful things. Okay, what we teach is true, it's real. Okay, but anyway, I hope you guys get what I'm saying on this. And a little bit of a side rant there is awesome, but um, just just know that when you, like, I just laugh every time someone's like, you always have it together. Yeah, that's not true, okay? <laughs> it's not true for anybody. All right, guys, I'll see you later. And uh, those of you guys I'm seeing at Funnel Hacking Live in two weeks from the recording of this, uh, I'll see you guys soon. I'm excited. Bye. Boom! Just try to tell me you didn't like that. Hey, whoever controls content controls the game. Want to interview me or get interviewed yourself? Grab a time now at stevejlarson.com.